Okay guys, so today is going to be a little bit different in the design challenge. This is one of those fun ones that I wanted to talk about when we did this. And if you haven't seen the video on design challenges, I made a call for people to submit design challenges. And I said that some of these would be fun and I haven't received a ton of those design challenges yet. So if you have one, please go ahead and comment on it. There are still a few more in the queue that I'm working on right now. But I said I wanted to do some fun ones and to see if old things could design. So we're going to actually be taking a look today at Mac OS 8. Eight, and we're going to try and see if we can open up Illustrator 5.5 on that. So on GitHub, this fellow here, Felix Reisberg, he has developed an app that runs Mac OS 8 on it. So it's always fun, you know, to go back and to see these things. And this is way before I started using Illustrator. So we're going to go see if we can get Illustrator to open up on here. So he released this on GitHub. It will run Mac OS 8 as a app on your desktop. And to be perfectly fair, it says, should I use this for serious application? And he says, probably not. So we're going to see if it works, but just to be clear, he says that you probably shouldn't. So let's go ahead and open this up. I've already downloaded it. Here it is. I wanted to see if I could make it full screen, but you can see I've got an emulation arrow there. So we're going to see if we can open this up. So let's open up apps and it's supposed to have Illustrator 5.5 on here. So we're going to see if we can so funny to go back and look at these old things. Um, there's Adobe Photoshop and oh there's Adobe Illustrator. Okay. So we actually have Premiere too. So let's uh let's open this up. Looks like it's the trial. Obviously he wouldn't put the whole thing on here. And I'm gonna open it up. Okay, so can't hyphenate English text. So what we're looking at is um, Illustrator way back in the day and we're seeing can it design something today so this is going to be a learning experience for all of us as we go along here seeing what we can do so let's try and we'll just try and design a van because vans are the best and looks like we can get a rounded rectangle which is great whoa okay and I just want to say to the designers who started out with this. Kudos to you. Looks like the space bar does work well. The uh, the refresh rate on these was really something. Let's see if we can use keyboard shortcuts. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so we've got our van and well, it looks like there's a blend tool. Fill tool. This is so crazy, just to, to go back and look at this. I don't even know how to change the color on here. We've come so far as designers, it's amazing. Okay, let's try and make some wheels. And like I said, this is less serious. It's not like we're really trying to do a serious project in here. It's just fun to see if these things can design. Obviously they could, right? Like people used this tool for professional use in the 90s. And that's really incredible. Oh look, here's the graphing tool. I bet that looks exactly the same as it does now because Adobe has not updated that in forever. Custom color. Um, nope. And probably some of you are watching this who used this program and you're like yelling at the screen right now trying to tell me where these things are. I just want to change the color. There's the layers panel. Okay. Oh, paint style. Oh, okay. Here we go. Advanced options. Ooh, nice. See, this is 90s style right here. So if we can duplicate that, we can. Okay, so the option drag duplicate is this old. And I can hold down shift to keep it in line. So that's cool. I'm actually going to delete that though, because I want to duplicate this and then resize it. But how do I resize it? That's the question. I 
do not know how to resize it, actually. Command Z does undo, so that's cool. Um, yeah, this is interesting. I can manipulate individual points with the direct selection tool. I don't know why I'm on the conversion tool here. I just want a regular selection. I wonder what the limitations were of this trial version. I wonder if it only lasts so long or what. What's this? Okay, that tells us the current tool, which is convert direction point, which it should not be. There's the pen tool. You can draw something. Looks like the pen tool was a little bit less sophisticated. Can't really use any of the keyboard shortcuts to make adjustments to the point on the fly. Now granted, this is running in an emulator, right? And so there could just be troubles with that. If I can't use my selection tool, well, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Everything is closing. Okay, we're going to quit it and we're going to try it again. How's that? <laughs> Turn it off, turn it back on. Should have worked in the 90s, right? I was only a couple years old when this was the operating system. It's funny because you talk about Mac OS 8 and it sounds like it shouldn't be that long ago. We've been on 10 for, for so many years. I love these old icon styles. Not that I would design anything like that today, but it's just so fun to see the way that they used to look. Okay. So, we're going to try this again. Drag out our rounded rectangle. See if we hold down shift, it can be a square. Option can resize around the center point. You cannot option scroll to zoom though. Okay. I just don't see a way to resize this shape. I can move it. I can't resize it. There's no bounding box to it. Only the points. So whoever designed with this, how did they do it? Because if you can't resize your artwork, Okay, I'm turning on the help balloons so I can see what I'm doing here. You could add notes to your objects. Interesting. I wonder if that's something that's still there, just like hanging around. How about some rulers? Oh, rulers on the bottom and the right. Interesting. So apparently the help was limited to balloons. Let's click this help. Oh, that's the help for the actual emulator, not for Adobe. Okay, so if I can't resize it, that means I have to get it right, right away. I just, I can't believe that that was the case. There's just no way, but let's move on and see if we can get back to where we were before making the wheel. Now we can move it, recolor this one. Where was that? That was under object, paint style. Okay, so we had fill and stroke, make it yellow. Tone that down a little bit. In case you guys don't know, yeah, the yellow van is my other brand that is a travel blog and podcast that I do with my wife. So one of the reasons you see this so much. I have no idea what just happened. So when he says don't use it for serious work, he's not kidding because you can see that you cannot use it for serious work. Somehow I messed this up again and I do not know how to get it back. I thought it was a 
pretty good with Microsoft Paint back in the day. So maybe I just have completely forgotten how to work in a program like this. But it doesn't seem like I can get it to do much. That could be the emulator. I'm sure there were a lot of people who were using this for professional work in 91. But not me. So we're working in CMYK here. Interesting. I don't necessarily see a way to change to RGB. Let's try adding a stroke just because. Okay, so we can't add a stroke. Okay, now let's go ahead and put our circle in. Not the stroke, we want no fill. And that's interesting, there wasn't a red line on the no fill. Back in the day, it was a gray line. Oops, black. And then we'll come here. And we'll make another circle. Shift does keep it in proportion. We'll make this one white. And try and maneuver it. Can we select two things at a time? We can. Can we align them? Doesn't look like there's any kind of an alignment option. Let's try duplicating this so that we can have two wheels. First, we'll move it down. Give ourselves a windshield here. I keep wanting to duplicate because so much of my workflow is just like duplicating a shape right there and just using that to make the next thing. But this just, if you want to resize it or anything, you just can't. So really needed to know what you were doing. Okay, so we've got a scale tool, measure tool, type tool, rounded rectangle, circle, or ellipse, I guess. Oh, I called it the oval tool. Freehand, paintbrush, scissors, which had the extra pen tools underneath it, the pen. This was Illustrator 5.5. It really makes you wonder what was going on in like Illustrator 1. And how was there a blend tool? That's just crazy to me. I, I got to try that out. Let's make it red. And then we'll grab a circle, make it blue. I'm going to try the blend tool here. Please use the blend tool on a selected point on a path. Select both of these and then we'll blend them. It keeps beeping at me, telling me I'm doing it wrong. Um, let's just do five steps. Wow. That's crazy. It's crazy to me that like the blend tool existed. Look, it creates a separate blend shape, separate from the others. It's crazy to me that that tool existed when so much else didn't. This is gradient vector. And here's the graph tool. Let's draw a graph. Yeah, look, the graph tool pretty much looks exactly the same as it does now. I don't have any data here, so I'm not going to actually make a graph. Okay, so can we not do Pathfinder operations at all? That's the question here. So I think there's a bug where the selection tool will just decide that it's the convert direction point tool, and it just won't work after that. And without the selection tool, there's not much that we can do. Let's answer the question then. Can it design? And the answer is no, it cannot design. You cannot use Illustrator 5.5 on Mac 8 to do design work. You know, I'm a proponent of using all kinds of things, but this just doesn't work. It's so clunky. It was probably great in the day. I, 
I don't know how anybody really used it. And maybe that's why the icons looked so chunky and so clunky back in the day because they were designing in this type of an environment. But the answer to today's question is, it cannot design. <laughs>